Hey guys, we're in DCU physics department. Now this is the very physics department I came to to learn all about physics after leaving school many, many years ago. I came here to try and heal an old wound. Chemists and physicists are sworn enemies and I've invited a chemist into the physics department for the first time ever. She's gonna try and convince me that chemistry is cool. I don't think she has a chance. Hello, Leanne. Hello, Dan. Welcome to the physics department. Thank you. It is fine to be here. So Leanne is a chemist and chemists and physicists don't get on. Traditionally. So uh, she's going to try and teach me about chemistry and, and tell me that it's cool. It is cool, Dan. Mm -hmm. Right. OK. Yeah. Well, uh, I've heard that, you know, chemicals are everywhere and they're ruining our lives. And so chemists make chemicals. So therefore, if chemists went around, we wouldn't have chemicals. So we shouldn't have chemists and chemicals should go away. That is wildly untrue, Dan. Absolutely everything in the whole wide world is a chemical or some mixture. Of chem You're a chemical. Everything you've on you is a chemical. Everything you eat is a chemical. I'm a chemical. You are a multitude of chemicals, and, all mished up together. And I eat chemicals. You eat them every day. Oh, well, okay, well, give me an day. example of a chemical. Okay, well, you breathe in oxygen and that keeps you alive. You breathe out carbon dioxide and trees need that to live. Mm -hmm. Every day you eat cereal for breakfast and that's filled yeah. with lots of different things that you need to stay alive, like Wait. iron, which supports your blood. Okay. All these things. So when I eat my breakfast in the morning, I'm eating chemicals? You're eating chemicals. Okay, well, can you prove this to me? Can you show me something? Yes, I can. What we're going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull iron out of your cereal and I'm going to show you that you eat iron every day. Okay, go on. Do okay. it a shot. Okay, here we go. We have my lovely blender, which I promise I know how to use. Okay. And yeah, fire ahead. bag of cereal. Okay, cornflakes. Cornflakes or... I think these are actually the honey, honey toasted. Oh, nice, They're delicious. A little, bit, a little bit fancier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. lovely. Pull a load of them in there. Okay, I promise I know how to use this. Yeah. Excuse me. So. She's a chemist, you see, it's struggling. There's buttons and dials, you know? Okay, apologies for the noise. Go. Okay. We're mushing up the. Mushing, mushing up. Okay, okay. Mushing. Are we nearly finished? Let's see, let's see. So what we want is, so there's iron in there, but obviously like if you look at this, can you see iron in there? Show to the guys at home. Can you see any iron? You know what iron looks like. It's a metal, right? The yeah, the, I don't see any iron. It's a metal yeah. that we build things with. We don't yeah, see it. You're, you're full of lies. No. There's no iron so in there. So it's in there. There's a teeny weeny amount. It's in there. It's just we need to get it out. So okay. the first step to getting it out is breaking it up, breaking up all this into tiny little pieces. And that's mm -hmm. what our blender is going to do. We're going to just go, I'm going to give this a, a shake and we're going to give it another quick go again. If you were doing this at home and you don't have a blender, you can just like mush it up with like okay, a spoon, okay. but it takes a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. modern advances. In yes, science yes, yes, wonderful. I'm sure a physicist designed this. I'm, sh I'm sure they did. <laughs> so you want this? Yeah. Yes, I do, I do, I do. So what we're going to do is we're going to Okay. This we have here. mushed up. We have mushed up a good honey chunk corn of flakes. honey cornflakes. We want, we really want the kind of this the powdery stuff. Really, okay. we'll try and any bigger bits. We'll just keep them out for now. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oops, I've made a mess. Um, but it's fine. It's fine. Now, um, we'll just kind of crunch up a few more with, okay, my, with them up. my raw. Wow, wow, power, wow. Oh you know? my god, okay. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to add in a wee bit of water. Water, yeah. And that's going to help. And that's a chemical, right? That's a chemical, H2O. H2O. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to mix this around, okay? And it's going to turn it into a lovely little mush. This, okay. Now, normally, you'd, I, I assume you're one of the. Yeah, I usually put milk, milk on my cornflakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah, are yeah. people who use water. Oh, that's weird. That's Chemists, gross. probably. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to mush this up for a while. Okay, and then what we want is we want to find a way to get it out. So one of the, the important like things that we do in chemistry is if we want to separate things, there's loads of different ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we use filtration, so we'll pass yeah. it through 
like a substance, something with a, like holes and it can filter bigger yeah, things yeah, away yeah. from smaller things. But iron, we can filter it in a different way. Magnets? Yeah. So yeah, this is a now bit of you're talking my language. It's a bit yeah, of physics. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. We have some common ground here. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of magnets. Okay, so what we're going to so, do, we're going to just pass this or swirl this okay. around here for a while. We can even just yeah. like that. So the problem, this does take a little bit of time, so you have to have patience as a chemist cool. sometimes. Let's show the guys at home. Oh, sorry, pardon me. Around. Okay. okay. And then after a while, okay. we should get a little black fuzz. It's okay. Only small, a little bit, a tiny bit of iron here. So can you see that oh, there's little bits of black yeah, starting? Sure. Let's, let's show it up close to the guys. Okay. So there's teeny little, like tiny bits of, like what looks like iron filings coming yeah, up yeah, at the I end see there. Them right here at the very end. Hold it nice and still so I can have a look. Yeah. Oh, wow, I see them. Little yeah. tiny, teeny, teeny, they're literally little bits of metal. They're bits of metal, yeah. Bits of iron. And so if we As go... we're eating actual, it's not like some vitamin iron, it's no. actual iron. Yeah. And if you look at the back of your cereal box, it'll include yeah. a list of ingredients, and iron is one of them. And it'll tell you, how many you know milligrams there should be okay. in in your whole thing of, of cereal? So if you stay at this for a while, you'll get you'll start yeah, getting more and more iron more out. More. So the, the the better you blend it and the more time yeah, you spend, yeah, you'll yeah. get more and more iron. But yeah, you too. Cool. Oh wow! Yeah. Good job. So we'll leave this here for a little minute, and I'm sure we can come back to it, come later. Back to it later. Okay, we'll more perfect. Well, thank you. Okay. Mag thanks for including magnets. magnets. I really like that little bit of physics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a big messy hand, so I might get a no bit. No problem. Of you go clean up, and we'll move on to the next experiment. Okay, that was like kind of cool, I guess. But uh, I'm going to need to see more. Can you impress me with anything else? Yeah, you like bubbles, right? Even physicists like bubbles, right? Okay, physicists kind of like bubbles. Yeah. yeah every, everybody with a soul likes a bubble. Who, okay. who can say no to a yeah, bubble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, bubbles are cool. Bubbles grand. are cool. But yeah, come on. I, I, I've, I've seen bubbles before. Seen, well, bubbles are made. Like it's chemistry. Chemistry explains how bubbles work mm -hmm. and how we can make bubbles even better. Oh, even better. Even better than your average bubble. So do you just sit at home and blow bubbles traditionally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you blow them and they pop and they do their they thing. Okay. Okay. So well, I can tell you how we can make bubbles a little bit better and okay. last a bit longer. Okay. And sometimes, if you have the time and the space and the energy, you can make, even make giant bubbles with what I'm going to tell you about. Okay. Come on. Come yeah, on. Okay. Up with it. Up okay. with it. So if so, this is all to do with something called surface tension. Are you familiar with surface tension? Surface tension isn't that like when you can uh, little ants and stuff can walk across water? Yeah, exactly. So all all different liquids have surface tension. So some have very weak surface tension, some okay. have really strong surface tension. Water mm -hmm. is super strong. So what it means is the molecules of water yeah. have a really strong internal like pull. And it makes almost like a little skin on top of the water okay, where the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the water is held together. And that's like chemicals holding yeah. on to each other. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And it's like the relationship between them keeps them keeps them together. Mm -hmm. And because of that really strong, you know, pull, um, things like the pond skaters, the insects can walk on top of water and you can float certain things on top of water. Mm -hmm. But that makes for very, very poor bubbles. If you were to try, Dan, if you try to blow a bubble with just water, we'll see what okay. happens. Okay. So, okay, I'm going to blow bubbles with some chemistry yeah. stuff. Dip that into the water okay. and try and blow a bubble, and we'll see what happens. Nothing! <laughs> no bubbles. Just, no no bubbles. bubbles. So the, what happens is water is, it's so strong, the surface tension is so strong and it's so rigid uh -huh. that it won't let, you know, it won't let it stretch. Oh, it won't stretch. bend it won't and stretch. Bend okay. and stretch. It's too rigid. Well, how do we bend apart. and stretch or make a bending stretch? Okay, so the first thing we do is we add in a surfactant. Do you know what a surfactant is, Dan? No. No. Okay, so surfactant is like a fancy word for soap. You wash yourself, right, Dan? Chemists love to come up with fancy words for things that are they sound smarter than they really are. But yes, go ahead. Okay, sly digs. Um, okay. Yeah, I sometimes wash myself <laughs> occasionally, yes. Okay, well, soaps and surfactants, that's, that's a type of chemical. And if you were to add your surfactant into water, it actually removes a lot of that surface tension. Mm -hmm. If you pop a little bit of washing up liquid in there, your pond skater wouldn't actually be able to skate across the okay. top of the water anymore. Yeah, so if you want to make them sink, you just like throw yeah. a bit of that. Okay. No, I wouldn't do that personally. Yeah, yeah. But if for some reason you wanted to, Dan, you could. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so once you add in your surfactant in there mm -hmm. and you mix it up, you should be able to blow bubbles again. Okay. Which is, if you've blown bubbles at home, you've probably done that. You've added in washing up liquid or soap into water and mixed it up yeah. and been able to blow bubbles. Yeah, but you told me you were going to impress me with some super cool bubbles that do something more than normal bubbles. I've had normal bubbles. Come I on. I am, I am. Okay, so fi fine, fine. For all you're giving out. Yeah, I'll what do is it this? Green this chemical. Okay, well, that's, that's the washing up liquid then. Are you sure you use soap? <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, I've seen that okay. before. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Here's my bubble. Okay. Whoa! What? 
It's bouncy. There you go. Bouncy bubbles. No, you don't get that in the physics what? department, do you? No. <laughs> oh my God, give me another one. Okay, here you go. Well, you have your little bubble one, so you can yeah, use yeah, it now. Yeah. So just dip it in. Yeah, dip it in. Blow, and then you can bounce. Now point it down, Dan. It's much, e it's much easier to, to get it to come off. Now, Whoa, Dan. oh, that was big. Dan went overboard. Just a nice little bubble, nice little gentle bubble. Because what happens is the bigger Whoa. you... The bigger you make it, it the, the harder it is for it yes, to kind of okay. stay together. Maybe you should do the bubbles. I'll do the bubbles, Dan. You're not quite yes, there yet. Yes, sorry. I'm not qualified. I'm not a chemist. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you can have that oh, one. Ah, oh, oh, it's, look, it's like <laughs> hanging out here. It's like living on the table. Yeah. What? It's like a permanent bubble. <sighs> okay. okay. Bounce one to me. Whoa. Yeah. Yes. Ah, I'm too hard with them. You're too aggressive. Okay. Pull down your other sleeve. Now. Okay, my other sleeve. Sorry. Yeah. Be gentle, Dan. Okay, gentle. okay. You teach me. There Whoa. you go. Whoa. Yes, yes, <laughs> woohoo, yeah, bouncy bubbles, oh go. my god, I'm so impressed, there this you go. is cool. You can play tennis with your friend, yeah. you can play football, you can bouncy, you can try okay, hold on. with What's your knees. What's the chemistry, what's going on here, why is, why are these, how do you make these like super cool bouncy bubbles? Okay, so what I've done is I've added in something called glycerin. And that wow. sounds like a fancy chemical, but you'll find it in the baking aisle in your, uh -huh. in your local shop. Another fancy word for something that's not fancy, yes. But yeah. come on, okay, so you add in glycerin. Yeah, so if you add in glycerin or a sugar to it, it helps to make it bouncy. How it does mm. that is, so water, Yeah. It, ev it water evaporates quite easily, doesn't it? You've, you're familiar yeah, yeah, with yeah, 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 yeah. Evaporates where it like turns yeah. from a liquid into a gas. Yes, that's physics. That's physics. <laughs> well, go ahead. Um, it happens to chemicals. Okay, 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 come on. <laughs> um, and... Um, what if you add in glycerin or a sugar mm -hmm. into your into your mix it stops it evaporating as quickly so that's why the the bubbles last longer they'll be a little bit stronger okay. a little bit stickier basically and then right. you can bounce them okay yeah. so people at home watching should do that when they're making their bubbles a little yes. bit of glycerin a little bit so like if you have a cup of water you can add in a tablespoon of washing up liquid and then maybe two tablespoons of glycerin and give it a mix. And if you leave it sit for, if you leave it sit overnight, it works even better. Okay. Wow. Give it a bit of time to work. But yeah, and then you can leave it. I, I always keep a, I always keep a jar of it by my desk. If I'm having a bad day, yes, I'll blow yes, a few yes. bubbles. Cheer me up. Well, maybe I'll do the same. A little bit do. of chemistry in my life. Do. Okay. Well, here, that's cool. Do you have anything else to show me? Yeah. Oh, I, I, sh I think we should probably mention yes. that it doesn't work on skin. Okay, so that, that's yeah, why we that's had why you roll you up your yeah. sleeves. Okay, so why doesn't it work on skin? Okay, so it doesn't work on skin because because of the surfactant. The surfactant's job is, as we know, to wash ourselves yes, yes. and clean things and clean you know your your pots and pans and your dishes. That's yes, what your soap yes, yes. is for. And so what it does is it absorbs fats and oils and things like mm -hmm. that. And our bodies create oils yeah, all greasy, the time. Yeah, greasy, fatty, weird yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as the bubble touches you. It will kind of re it'll interact with that fat. Okay. It'll kind of absorb it up, and uh -huh. then the pops the bubble. Pops the bubble. Oh, okay, cool. So, so if you have use your sleeves, if you have nice fabric, yeah. the woolier fabric works really well as well. Okay. All right, Leanne. I have time for one more experiment. Okay. So this better be a good one. So I want to be impressed here. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you. Um, well, everybody, you've seen how oil and water don't mix before, right? Yes. Just like how physicists and chemists don't mix. Just exactly like yeah. that and we can try and make it happen you know and sometimes we can add stuff in and it, yeah. it might work yeah, yeah. um but it, some, yeah, some yeah, people yeah. are just not meant to work together okay um so if you've ever i suppose played around in the kitchen you might see yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. so like this is um this is just food coloring in water so just to just to jazz it up because yeah. we like we like and our colors food coloring is probably a chemical as well it is a, a mixture of a few oh, different right. ones okay so we're just going to pour our water in here uh -huh. okay we don't need it we don't need that much. We're going to just take okay. about that much there. Okay. And then, so we're going to pour, this is just oh, norm, normal cooking, cooking oil. oil. Yeah, cooking oil in here. And if you pour it in, normally if, if I were to pour two different liquids together, they might mix up, but these ones don't. Yes. Okay. So water and oil don't really like mm, each yes, other. Yes, yes, yes. And... Physics, chemistry. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. And if I were to, you know, take a spoon here and mix yeah. them around, they would still separate back out the way the way they were. Okay. If I were to flip them upside down, they'd still, they'd still, you know, go back to their their points the way they were. Um, so they, what are we going to do? What's going to happen here? What are we going to do? We're going to add in something to cause a reaction down okay. at the a bottom. Chemical reaction. A chemical reaction. Okay. And is it going to explode? Sadly, no. Okay. Cool. We're going to keep it safe. Um, so we're going to cause a little reaction down here at the bottom. Yeah. And. Um, it's going to look like it's mixing our oil and water 
but they're not going to mix. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay. So oh, well. what, okay, what are these guys? These guys are effervescent tablets. So I do like those little vitamins you take. Yeah, so yeah. you know what, if you pop your vitamin C tablet in the, yeah. in the water and it bubbles and then you can yes, drink it. Yes, yes. These it's are called an effervescent. Effervescent tablet. And what that means is it effervesces, so it fizzes when you pop it into water. Other oh, examples yeah. would be like an Alka-Seltzer tablet yeah. or um, denture cleaners. Do okay. you use denture cleaners? Uh, I'm not that old. No, okay. No. Um, so denture cleaners are another one and they okay. fizz when they pop into water. So let's see what happens. Okay. Can we pop it on this? Oh, yeah, we'll pop it up here. This lovely oh, snazzy Oh, wow, light. Okay, okay, cool. So we're just gonna, we won't need a full tablet. We're gonna pop that in here. Yeah, just a half. Okay, and so in your effervescent tablet, you have a mixture of different chemicals all in there, all in like a dried powder form. So okay. one of them is a type of, of a carbonate, and carbonate um, kind of gives you a hint as to what some of the chemicals that are in Carbon? it. Carbon? Carbon, yeah, okay. and oxygen is in there as well. Oh, wow, okay. And then another one of the dry, dried chemicals in your tablet is a type of acid, a citric acid. And acids, people normally think of as like a liquid, like vinegar yeah. or lemon like juice. Things that melt your face off. Yeah. Yeah, exactly but there's lots of normal ones that you find in the kitchen as well but so what's happening in here there's all sorts of bubbliness happening what's causing that or what, what, what's, what's causing, happening what's causing that is um these things don't in the tablet they don't react when they're dry when they're in the tablet but as soon as you pop them into the water they start to react because in the water the compounds can move around so the the acid and the carbonate can come into come into contact with each other and react and when they react they form carbon dioxide gas the same stuff that we breathe out when we okay and exhale. they're going up and down like it's, like it's like a lava lamp exactly so what's happening is the bubbles of carbon dioxide that are being made down here are pushing the water up through the oil okay. on top of it when the bubbles get to the top there they burst and then oh, they're dropping down so yeah they're dropping back down because the water doesn't want to mix with the oil and doesn't want to sit on the top so it falls back. Oh, wow. it's really getting going now. They're super cool. Yeah. It's gloopy. It looks like it's almost like melted wax or yeah. something crazy. Pop wow. more in and see what happens. Cool stuff. It's really nice. It's like really like relaxing. You have these lovely things, like these lovely bouncy bubbles and these yeah. lovely glowing things, lovely liquids. We don't really have like lovely, no. nice things like that. In fit oh. No, we have lovely things in <laughs> physics. Physics has lovely stuff. There's loads of other lovely stuff. Don't, don't, get, sure. don't get sucked in by this, guys. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's super cool. You can make yeah. your very own lava lamp. You can pull chemicals out of your breakfast cereal. Yeah. You can make bouncy bubbles all mm -hmm. using chemistry. All use, and everything is stuff that you find at home or in the shop. They're all, all every, there's chemicals everywhere. Everything okay, is chemical. well, 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 you know what? I, I'm still happy to be a physicist, okay. but you know what? I think that this little, you know, little partnership that we've got here, maybe isn't the worst thing in the world. Maybe there is a place in the future for chemists and physicists to live together in peace and harmony. <laughs> I think maybe. I think we could work it out. Okay. No, well, here, Leanne, thank you so much for showing us this sort of stuff. And is there anywhere that some kids can go if they want to learn more sort of this stuff? Like, is there anywhere where you can teach stuff like this? Yeah. So I work for CTYI, which is the Centre for Talented Youth Ireland. It's based here in DCU because I'm, I was in DCU as well. I'm a yes. DCU student. Or I was a DCU student. Yeah. Um, and we put on classes for kids from the ages of six up to 17 uh -huh. in subjects that they wouldn't really do in school. Okay. Things that they might be interested in, like forensic science, superhero science, oh, wow. um, or even like some of the humanities, like history and okay, law. Okay, right. Like yeah, well. We won't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. But that sounds great. So, guys, yeah. if you enjoy what we're doing today and if you'd like to work with Leanne and see her, well, then maybe you can look up CTYI too. So, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Thanks so much, Leanne. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.